Olive was standing in the middle of a huge amusement park. People were having a great time everywhere. Great! Lots of fun things to do here. Whoa! Suddenly something zoomed over Olive's head. She looked up to see people riding on a roller coaster. Olive thought it looked very scary. Oh, wow. Wish I could have a go on that. Olive looked down and saw a little hamster. Hello, I'm Olive. I'm Harry. I really want to ride the Mega Scream roller coaster. The Mega Scream? I don't like the sound of that at all. Problem is, I'm not allowed to go on it on my own. Would you like to ride the Mega Scream with me? Olive took another look at the Mega Scream. As she did, the roller coaster cars did a loop the loop. <laughs> Olive gulped. The Mega Scream looked really scary to her. Um, it does look like lots of fun, but it's very hot today. We could get um, sunburned so high up. Maybe we should save it for later when it's cooler. Oh, OK then. Olive could see how disappointed the little hamster was and she wanted to cheer him up. Olive looked around at all the other rides. Hmm, an amusement park with lots of fun things to do. I think I may have an idea. Come on, Harry, we're going to have the most fun day ever. Olive decided that she and Harry would try everything in the amusement park, apart from the mega scream, of course. They threw coconuts at the coconut shy. They had a go on the carousel. Whoa, this is fun! Said Olive as they went round and round. They slid down the helter-skelter. They even had a go on the dodgem cars. Soon, they had tried pretty much everything in the amusement park, apart from the Mega Scream roller coaster. Can we go on the Mega Scream now? Him, I'm really hungry. Why don't we get some yummy ice creams? Oh, ice cream, my favourite. It was Olive's favourite too. They went and bought two huge cones. But Olive's ice cream was so big, she couldn't see where she was walking. Olive, shall we try this one last ride over here? Why not? Said Olive, not seeing what the ride was. She and Harry took their seats and suddenly a metal bar came down over them. Eh, uh, what ride is this? It's the Mega Scream. Okay. Here we go. Before Olive could say anything, the roller coaster accelerated away. <laughs> Olive and Harry went zooming and looped the loopings all over the park. Isn't it amazing, Olive? I thought I'd be scared, but now I'm on it. This is the best ride ever. <laughs> Finally, the ride came to the end. Olive and Harry looked down. Their ice creams had disappeared. Oh. They looked behind them to see two foxes covered in ice cream. Oh, uh, sorry. Our ice creams must have flown off the cones somewhere on the ride. <laughs> we rather enjoyed our surprise snack, said one of the foxes. Olive and Harry got off the mega scream. Thanks for giving me such an amazing afternoon. And thank you for helping me get over my fear of roller coasters. <laughs> Chuckled Olive. They both laughed. <laughs> and as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Typical Olive daydreaming again, said her mum. Okay, actually, I rode the Mega Scream roller coaster. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. Olive the Olive was standing in the middle of a huge circus ring. She was wearing big shoes, a silly wig and a large red nose. Just like the one worn by a clown in a poster she could see nearby. Oh, eh, I'm at the circus. Suddenly, someone shouted. Oh, look out. A cheeky little monkey wearing a red hat swung past, snatching her red clown's nose from her beak. Hey, come back. You'll never catch him. He stole my red nose too. Said a very sad-looking seal. Dressed in a clown costume. I've been trying to get him a red nose back all day, but he's just too quick. Oh, I'm Olive, and you are on that poster. I am the great Grimaldi, the funniest clown in town. Or at least I was. I don't feel very funny now, not without my red nose. Olive was sad to see Grimaldi so downhearted. I 
I'll get your red nose back for you. Then you can be the funniest clown in town again. It's not a possible that a cheeky monkey is always out of reach. <laughs> Olive looked up at the monkey sitting on a trapeze high up in the roof of the circus tent. He was wearing a red nose. <laughs> then she saw the circus cannon nearby. A cheeky monkey too high to reach. A circus cannon? I think I may have an idea. You can get him a red nose back? Grimaldi asked. Yes, wish me luck. Suddenly, the cannon went boom! Wow! Shooting Olive up into the air like a rocket. Bacay! Red nose, here I come! Olive was ready to snatch the red nose back, but as she flew over, the monkey ducked, sending Olive shooting over his head and bouncing off the sides of the circus tent. Luckily for Olive, Grimaldi swung into view on another trapeze and caught hold of her just in time, much to the now-watching audience's delight. Oh, thanks, Grimaldi. Olive looked down and saw the red-nosed monkey balanced on a high wire below them. OK, one red nose coming up. Olive let go and dropped down onto the high wire, catapulting the surprise monkey back up towards Grimaldi. Who caught him by his feet? Gotcha! cried Grimaldi. Suddenly, the monkey threw the red nose up towards Grimaldi. Hey, catch! called the monkey. Grimaldi caught the red nose, but he had to let go of the monkey's feet, and the monkey dropped down onto the high wire, sending Olive catapulting. I have it! Olive looked down. Eh, uh, but who has us? They tumbled towards the circus ring below. Luckily, they landed in a safety net. Who are they laughing at? They're laughing at you, Grimaldi. You don't need a red nose to be funny. You're Grimaldi, the funniest clown in town. You're right. Just then, Olive heard something falling from above. She looked up and plunk! The monkey had dropped her red nose and it landed right back on Olive's beak. Bravo, Olive. You make a great clown. Well, I do like a bit of clowning around. They both laughed, and as they did, <laughs> Olive realised <laughs> it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive daydreaming again, said her mum. Pekek, actually, I've been clowning around in the circus. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. Olive the ostrich! Olive found herself on a seaside pier lined with amusement oh. stores all covered in flashing lights. Oh, this place looks like fun. But where is everyone? Out from behind a counter appeared a man in a stripy waistcoat. Hello, and welcome to Cuthbert's Candy Hut. Hello, Cuthbert. I'm Olive. Oh, so what tickles your taste buds, Olive? Juicy jelly bear, a tasty stick of seaside rock, or the best candy floss on the whole pier? Oh, can I try the candy floss, please? Cuthbert poured a pink sugar mixture into his machine, spun it round in the bowl, dipped in a stick and gave Olive some bright pink candy floss. Mmm, that's delicious. And that's not the only treat round here. Let me show you the rest of the pier. First, Cuthbert took Olive on the ghost train. Okay, that was some scary stuff. Next, they looked in the Hall of Mirrors, which turned Olive and Cuthbert into weird and wonderful wibbly-wobbly shapes. Last was the giant teacup ride. It spun so fast, it made them both really dizzy. <laughs> wow, that was fun. This pier's amazing, Cuthbert. Why is no one here enjoying themselves? Oh, no one visits the pier anymore. They're all too busy. At this rate, I'll have to close my candy hut forever. Well, look, here's someone. I'm sure they'll love the pier. All right, mister, got any candy floss, please? Said a boy. Cuthbert gave him some candy floss he'd already made. You serious, bro? That is tiny. This pier is rubbish. I'm off. Please, wait just a second. Cuthbert, your candy flosses are a bit small, but maybe I can help. Olive looked around. Hmm, giant spinning cups, big candy canes. I think I may have an idea. 
Olive and Cuthbert poured the candy floss mixture into one of the giant cups on the teacup ride. Olive pulled the lever and dipped in a large candy cane to make the biggest candy floss ever! Wow, that's well wicked! Nice one, Olive bro! Cheers, mister! But no one noticed that Olive had left the ride switched on. Olive, look! Olive turned oh. to see a gigantic <gasps> ball of candy floss. Greg, it's getting bigger. That is well cool. Suddenly, there was a gust of wind which blew the candy floss out of the teacup and all the way into town. And as it did, it rolled over a policeman. Hey, 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 hey. What's all this then? Whoa! He got caught up in the sticky mess. Then it rolled over a lollipop lady. My side means stop! It also rolled over everyone at the skate park. Dude, no way! Finally, it blew to the top of a skating ramp, stopped, then rolled all the way back down the street to Olive and Cuthbert on the pier. We'd better unstick everyone quick. Olive and Cuthbert used the candy canes to hook everyone out. They do all sound angry. But just then, the people noticed all the rides. A teacup ride, a ghost train, a hall of mirrors. Everyone remembered how great the pier was and they all ran off to have fun while Cuthbert sold lots and lots of candy floss. Would you like another one, Olive, as a thank you for all your help? I don't know. I think it's time I went to brush my beak after all that sugary candy floss. <laughs> Oh, yes. They both laughed, <laughs> and as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive, daydreaming again, said her mum. Heck, actually, I helped make the biggest candy floss ball ever. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. Olive was in a big field surrounded by stalls and crowds of people. There was a wonderful cooking smell in the air. That's making me hungry. Lots of people were jumping around, fanning their mouths with their hands. Ooh, that's strange. Olive spied a woman staring an extra large pot. Hello, I'm Olive. Why are these people jumping about? Howdy, Olive. I'm Emma Lou. These people have been eating hot chili. They're jumping around and finding their mouths trying to cool down. Here, try some. Mm. That chili tastes amazing. Oh, it's quite spicy, though. Oh, phew! <laughs> <laughs> really? Fact is, I made this one nice and mild for the chili speed eating competition later. Hey, I left a can of beans for the chili in my truck. Could you watch the pot, please, while I go get it? Of course. On a nearby stage, Olive saw a cowboy start to play a guitar. Howdy, y'all, and welcome to Hank's Hoedown. Oh, that looks like fun. As people started to dance, Olive danced too. But as she jigged about, she accidentally knocked a huge jar of chilli powder into the pot. Oops. Maybe more chilli powder will make it taste even better. Emmy Lou returned and poured the can of beans into the chilli. Thanks, Olive. Now it's time for the competition. Why don't you enter? Um, well, I don't know if I... Come on, it'll be fun. All the chilli-eating competitors were ready, including Olive. They each had a big, steaming bowl of Emmy Lou's chilli in front of them. Howdy, I'm Hank Starvin. You know the rules. Whoever eats their bowl of chilli the fastest wins. Three, two, one, go! Everyone started to eat the chilli, but after a few seconds, their mouths were burning, including Olive's. Cake, my beak's burning. Olive, what did you do to my chilli? Oh, sorry, I was dancing and I accidentally knocked a jar of chilli powder into the pot. Oh! Olive spotted Hank's guitar by the stage and remembered people leaping about earlier after eating chilli. Hmm. Some country music. Her people jumping about to cool their mouths down. I think I may have an idea. Hank, start playing, please. Hank grabbed his guitar and started to play. Olive began to jump up and down, fanning her mouth with her wings. Yeah, follow me. This is the chilly cool down, cool down. Soon everyone was copying Olive, all jumping about and fanning their mouths. <laughs> faster, Hank, faster. Yeehaw! Hank played faster, everyone danced faster. Olive's plan seemed to be working, but when the dance ended... Oh, my 
my mouth still burning. Dancing made me forget about my burning mouth, but now I've stopped, I'm thinking about it again. Oh! This was not good news. Olive had no idea what to do. But then Emmy Lou appeared, carrying a tray oh. of strawberry milkshakes. <laughs> hey, I forgot to say I made these milkshakes too. Best thing for cooling down a hot, chilly mouth. Olive and the other competitors drank the shakes. And finally, <laughs> their mouths were cooled oh. down. Phew, that's better. That was one exciting chili contest. Olive's chili cool down hold down could be the next big country craze. Oh, I'm not sure. I think it was all a bit too hot to handle. <laughs> they all laughed, and as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive, daydreaming again, said her mum. Okay. Actually, I've been eating some super hot chili. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. Olivia's stage! Olive was standing by a stage in a television oh. studio with a cheering audience. She was wearing a pink skirt and top. On stage, two flamingos were dancing and singing. Yeah, 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 we'll give you a wink. Where the super hair goes, let me to wear pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Olive could see three judges. One of them was a big bull wearing a dark suit. His name was Moo Man Cowbell. Super Feathers, that was a terrible performance. Absolutely awful. The crowd began to boo. Super Feathers did not look happy. You sounded OK, but the other one, my pet cat has a better singing voice. Oh, he's not a very nice bull. If you've got any chance of winning the wow factor, you Super Feathers need to shape up before your final performance. Hmm, maybe I can help. Thought Olive and followed the girls as they went backstage. Yoo-hoo! Can I come in? My name's Olive. Yeah, all right, there. Uh, my name's Stacy and this is Tracy. How's it going, Olive? Oh, Tracy, what's wrong with your voice? Got this cold, haven't I? I can hardly speak, let alone sing. That's why we gave such a terrible performance. Yeah, it's the final soon. We're never going to win with Tracy sounding so rough. Olive looked down and saw that she was wearing the same pink costume as Tracy and Stacy. Hmm, my pink costume? Your pink costumes? I think I may have an idea. I could join Super Feathers and sing instead of you, Tracy. I'd fit right in. I'm a very good singer. Great idea, but you'll need to learn our dance routine and song super fast. Stacy and Tracy yeah, got to work yeah. teaching Olive the song and the yeah, dance routine. Yeah, yeah. It was hard work and Olive had to learn it really quickly. Very soon there was a knock on the dressing room door. Super Feathers, you're on stage in two minutes, darlings. OK, you ready, Olive? As ready as I'll ever be. Olive and Super Feathers began their performance. Yeah, 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 we'll give you a wink. We're the Super Feather Girls and we like to wear pink. At first yeah, it was going yeah, really yeah. well. Olive sang with Stacy and Tracy mimed along to the words. But as Olive danced, she got so carried away singing the song that she went in the wrong direction and she danced right off the front of the stage. Olive went flying and landed sitting in Moo Man Cowbell's lap. He looked completely shocked. But Olive carried on and managed to finish the song. Yeah, 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 we'll give you a wink. That was an utterly, completely, totally <laughs> amazing performance. No one's had the courage to jump in my lap before. Super Feathers, you are this year's Wow Factor winners. Yeah. So, thanks, Olive. You really saved the day. Yay, we're all going to be super famous. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if I'm cut out for fame, but I think you girls are going to be Super Feathers superstars. They all laughed, and as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive, daydreaming again, said her mum. OK, actually, I helped the Super Feathers win Wow Factor. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. 
Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. <laughs>